For as much as we seem to know about potential dangers, is it almost a, a, a bigger danger, the fact that we don't know so much? I mean, this is a relatively new science when we're talking about GMOs. Well, what, what we know is just the tip of the iceberg. We know that when you disrupt the integrity of the genetic code, you have hundreds of functions that are also changed. We're finding proteins now, new proteins that we've never seen before. But you only see them in the genetically engineered uh, crops or products, whether it's a bacterial product or whether it's, it's a crop. That engineering changes the integrity of the system. Genetic engineering as we're practicing it today is based on fossil science. It's part of the flat earth society, if you want to look at it that way. Because it's based on one gene, one function. We know that isn't the case because there aren't that many genes. Mm -hmm. So that you have one gene, as it interacts with other genetic material in relationship to it, that spatial relationship, as that is related to, then to the environment, that gives us the final product. So one gene can control or regulate hundreds of different products and different functions. It depends on the environment. And nobody's looked at uh, all of those hundreds of other things. We have situations where it was uh, looked at very intensively with the uh, dietary tryptophan, for instance, for instance uh, natural uh, amino acid that we need because that comes through the aromatic amino acid pathway that glyphosate blocks and so we have to get it somewhere else. But when the bacteria that were producing that were engineered to produce even more of it, be more efficient in production, they had it 99.9% .9 pure but in that one tenth of a percent we ended up with 541 people known dead and 1,800 people permanently damaged for life. A new protein, a protein that was produced only as a result of disrupting that, the integrity of the genetic code. So it's a new system, it's a new uh, process, and new science because the science that we base genetic engineering on, we discarded 50 years ago. We're still learning in the primitive stages of what this new genetic engineering is. One of the things we do know is that it's more like an infectious process, a virus infection, for instance, as Patrick Brown at University of California describes it, than it is a normal breeding or hybridization process. Essentially, very little similarity there, except uh, you have roots and leaves and a stem, but very little process from a functional standpoint. Uh, but it uh, does fit the infectious process. <clears throat> and so to understand genetic engineering, you really need to understand that disease progress and change that takes place.